Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to your full moon and Libra yoga class. My name is Natasha, also known as Nurse Natasha. If you're new here, welcome. If you're old here, welcome back. We are going to be doing a yoga class for the full moon and Libra, also known as the pink moon, coming up on April. It's technically on the 6th, but it peaks the night between the 5th and the 6th. So whether you're doing it on April 5th, April 6th, you can also do it a couple days before, a couple days after. That full moon energy kind of carries. But this is the full moon in Libra. Um, yeah, I. if you don't know me, if you've never done one of my classes before, I try to make my classes as accessible as possible. Um, I offer a ton of variations. I do recommend you have any props you need for your body, for your yoga nearby. Um, I will be queuing some stuff with the blocks today. So blocks, you can always have a strap, pillow, bolster, blanket, anything you need for your practice, anything that will make you feel good. Um, yeah, and remember that everything I say is an option, not an order, so do what feels best for you and your body. So, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this full moon in Libra, and then we're going to get into it. So, Libra is an air sign. Libra is the sign of balance, right? It's the scales. Um, in the tarot, Libra is ruled by the justice card. In the body, Libra actually rules um, the kidney, the bladder, um, the lower abs, and the lower back. Um, but in the sense of the chakras, Libra actually rules the heart chakra because our heart chakra, our Anahata chakra, is our chakra of balance. So you have seven chakras and the heart is right in the middle, balancing the lower three and the upper three. So that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Um, I have a lot of notes here. So like I said, this is called the pink moon. That doesn't mean the moon is going to be pink. That's just what this moon is called. And as we know, if you've done, been doing these full moon and new moon practices with me, um, full moons are generally about releasing and while yes this full moon I do recommend that you use it for releasing um, this would be a great time to do a cord cutting ritual um, specifically for relationships Libra is ruled by Venus which is our planet of relationships and love and beauty and appearance so releasing anything that you want any blockages regarding those things however this full moon has some pretty nice energy so if you would like to use this full moon to manifest you can um, I wrote manifesting a soft life, life era or romanticizing. Um, this is our last full moon before retrograde and eclipse season. So I recommend using this energy because things are about to get a little chaotic. Um, in April, the next new moon is another new moon in Aries with a solar eclipse. Um, Mercury retrograde starts this month. <laughs> Hooray! So I really recommend using this energy whether you need to release or you need to manifest, pretty much whatever you need, use this full moon. Use the energy of the full moon to accomplish that. Magic is just um, manipulating energy with intention, so do what feels best for you. Make your practice your own, whether it's yoga or magic or tarot or anything, but I definitely recommend using this full moon in Libra. So I think that's all I wanted to say. We're going to go ahead and get started. So like I said, we are going to be focusing on that heart chakra. We're going to get started a little bit different than we usually do. So we're actually going to get started on our belly. Now, I know that sounds weird. Usually, we maybe start on our back or in child's pose or standing, but we're going to get started in a prone savasana. So, prone savasana is just savasana on the other side. So, again, laying on your belly. Now, you can cross your forearms in front of you, and you can either rest your forehead or your chin on those forearms, or you could even turn your cheek to one side. I just recommend maybe midway through kind of turning to the other side so we kind of even out the neck but wherever you go I'm gonna go to my chin I also find that if you go to your chin it kind of takes some of the weight if you're like me and you have a big chest it kind of takes some of the weight off your chest you can also lay on a pillow here or a blanket so settling in here take a moment to kind of get all your fidgets out maybe rock the hips a little bit until you can kind of come to a stillness here now you can keep the eyes closed or open, whatever feels right for you and your body. And just start to bring your awareness to your breath. Not changing anything about it, just noticing as it goes in and out. Allowing these breaths to become deeper, longer, And noticing what happens in the body as you breathe. So maybe as you inhale, you feel that chest expand, that belly expand, allowing yourself to take up space. And as you exhale, you feel a gentle grounding. And a 
as you continue to breathe here, take a moment to take an inventory, do a little body scan, a mind scan, a soul scan, check in with the mind, body, soul, and see how you're feeling. And use this check-in process and your breath to bring you to the right here, the right now, being mindful of how you feel. And becoming aware of any tensions, blockages, constraints that might be coming up. Now we're practicing non-judgment, non-attachment, so we're not judging ourselves for these blockages that might come up. We know that we're human and that's just part of being human. Now I want you to specifically ask yourself, are there any blockages around love, around my heart, my heart chakra? Now remember the key to the heart chakra and the key to balance in the heart chakra is being able to both give love and receive love. So a lot of the times, you know, we're giving, 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 but when was the last time you opened yourself up to receive? So notice and be aware of anything that might be blocking your heart chakra, whether it's giving or receiving, acknowledging these things. And if you would like an intention for our class today, I have one to offer you, as I am removing any blockages from love in my life. I'm removing any blockages from love in my life. So anything that's blocking your ability to love, to give, or to receive, we're removing those. We're cutting the cord. We'll seal this with a breath. So take a big inhale in through the nose, filling up chest, filling up belly, taking up space. And open mouth, exhale, release it. Continuing to breathe deeply, maybe start to invite some movement in. So maybe you wiggle those toes, you wiggle the fingers, maybe you start to shake out those hips. Maybe shake the legs. Just bringing the awareness back into the body. And now gently when you're ready, you can lift your head off of your forearms and we're slowly going to move our hands underneath our shoulders. So we're setting up for a low cobra here. We're getting right into these heart openers, my friends. So hands underneath the shoulders, elbows are squeezed into the sides. We're gonna press our palms into the mat and we're gonna inhale, just lift the head, the chest, the shoulders. You do not have to raise very high. Exhale, release. Inhale, lift the head, the chest, the shoulders. Exhale, release. Inhale, lift. Exhale, release, two more. Inhale, lift. And exhale, release. Last one. Inhale. And exhale. Now we're gonna bring the arms out to the side, keeping the elbows bent. So palms are still into the mat, but our arms are extending out from the side. Elbows are bent. We're gonna go for a seal pose. This is also kind of like a mid cobra, right? So we have our low cobra, our high cobra. This is kind of like a middle cobra or seal pose. So our hands are at our sides. Elbows are bent, and same thing here. We're gonna press into the palms. Inhale, lift the head, the chest, the shoulders. Exhale, release. Inhale to lift. Exhale, release, three more. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale. And exhale, last one here. Inhale. And exhale. Gently moving those hands back in. Now option here, you can repeat your low cobra. If that felt good, or if you'd like a little more, you can take it to high cobra. So for our high cobra, we're gonna bring our hands back behind the shoulders, kind of right at our sternum line. Elbows are squeezed into the sides. And on the inhale, we straighten the arms all the way, lifting all the way up to our high cobra. 
Shoulder, elbow, wrist are stacked, palms are pressed into the mat, chin is lifted, chest is lifted. We're gonna do three of these here. And we're gonna hold them for a little bit longer. Take an inhale here, exhale, release down. Take a moment, take a breather. And on your next inhale, you press up and we hold. Again, try to press these shoulders down and away from the ears. Press the palms into the mat. Gaze is up, chin is lifted. Take a big inhale. Exhale, release. Take a breather here. We're going to do one more. When you're ready, inhale, press into the mat. Lift yourself up. Hips and pelvis are pressed into the mat. Chin is lifted, chest is lifted. Shoulders are pressed down and away from the ears. Now this time, take a big inhale here, and exhale, we're gonna find our way to a child's pose. So I'm bringing my knees at, as wide as the mat, sinking my hips back to my heels and extending my arms out. Letting my chest come to the mat, finding my balasana, my child's pose. Remember, it's okay if your hips do not touch your heels, but with every exhale, just gently encouraging those hips down. And the more you widen those knees, the more you can honor and make space for your belly and thighs. And just bring your awareness back to your breath here. Bring it back to your heart. Ask yourself, is there anything blocking my heart? Blocking my ability to give or to receive love? If so, that's okay. But we got to acknowledge it. we got to be aware of it so we can start to work through it. Reminding ourselves of our intention here. I'm releasing anything blocking love from my life. Taking a nice big inhale in, filling up chest, filling up belly. Open mouth, exhale. And gently on the next inhale, you can rise to your tabletop. So coming to your hands and knees, moving slowly with intention. Shoulder, elbow, wrist will stack. Hips will stack over the knees. We're going to go into our cat-cow flow here. So on the inhale, we lift the chin. Open the heart, arching the back, seeking that booty out. On the exhale, we round the back, tuck the pelvis, tuck the chin to the chest, doming out the shoulders. Inhale, we open. So here on your cow pose, you're opening the front of the heart. And on the exhale for our cat pose, we're actually opening the back of the heart. So we're kind of pressing the back of the heart up towards the ceiling. Inhale to open. And exhale to round. Now you can take five to seven more of these on your own breath, linking your breath to your movement, doing what feels good here, listening to your body. If you maybe want to take some full body circles, you want to go from side to side, anything that would feel good for you here, I want you to go there. Gently finishing up this last round, returning to a neutral spine. Now I'm going to give you two options here. Option number one is to continue with your cat-cow flow. Option number two is to play around with an extended cat-cow flow, where we flow instead of from our cow to our cat pose. Our cow pose is going to be a high cobra, and our cat pose is going to be a child's pose. So again, Option to stay here in your tabletop, flow through your cat-cow. You can also take a seated cat-cow. Your other option is to inhale to your high cobra and exhale 
to your child's pose. Wherever you are, whatever option you're choosing, we're going to do five rounds. So again, maybe you're in this extended version where we inhale to high cobra. We exhale to our child's pose. Continue to flow with your breath wherever you are. Linking breath to movement. Thoroughly warming up this heart, warming up our spine. Gently finishing up this last round, and we will all release into a wide-legged child's pose. And then to take some pressure off the wrists, and to also get a little bit deeper into the heart, if you would like, you can bend into the elbows, bring the palms together to touch in prayer, and bring that right over your head. So we're taking some pressure off the wrists and also getting into the heart just a little bit more here in our child's pose. And take a moment to breathe here. And now, option to stay here in your child's pose. Option if you'd like a little more, you can lift up to your table and then we'll find a puppy pose. Again, if you'd like to stay in your child's pose, please stay there. If you'd like to try puppy pose, our hips are going to stack over our knees, and then from there, the arms extend out, but the hips do not drop back. So it's essentially like a child's pose, except your hips stay lifted, our arms go out, and we drop our chest down to the mat. This is our puppy pose. A little bit more intense of a heart, throat, and shoulder opener. Again, you can remain in your child's pose if that feels good. Wherever you are, we're breathing. And then wherever you are, on the next inhale, you can just gently rise to your tabletop, taking your time, moving with intention. Spend a moment here if you'd like to just shake it out a little bit. And then setting up for our downward facing dog from our tabletop, we tuck those toes and we inhale those hips up and back, straightening the legs, pressing palms into the mat, pressing the chest through the shoulders towards the upper thighs and encouraging those heels down. Now, your heels do not have to touch the mat, but just encouraging them down. You can also keep those feet wide to honor and make space for the belly and thighs. And maybe we find some movement here. So maybe we pedal the feet. Maybe we shake the head. Maybe shake the hips. Gently coming to stillness. Inhale, gaze to the top of your mat or to your palms and then travel to a forward fold. So multiple ways to do that. You can take some baby steps forward. You can walk your hands back to your feet, or you can take a big old step forward into your forward fold. Now again, you can keep those feet wide if you'd like. And do what feels good here in your forward fold. Maybe you want to grab for opposite elbows. Maybe you want to sway from side to side. Breathing here. Gently finding stillness. Hands who come to your shins or to your blocks, press into them. Inhale for a halfway lift, flat spine. Exhale to fold. And then inhale, we'll come all the way up to standing. Arms come up overhead. Exhale, palms come together to touch and then come to your heart center. Taking a moment here. Finding your breath. Tapping into that heart center. 
All right, my lovelies, we're standing in our Tadasana mountain pose and the tops of our mat. Now in your Tadasana, you can keep those feet hips distance, a little wider if that feels good. If you'd like, you can release your hands from your heart to either side, palms facing forward like we have some energy shooting out of our palms. We are still in Aries season, my friends, so I like to imagine some fire kind of shooting out of my palms. We're standing tall and proud in our mountain pose. Now we're gonna flow through some half sun salutes with a heart opener. So on the inhale, we reach those arms up, Exhale, bending the elbows, goal posting or cactusing the arms. You're taking this heart opener here. So the chin lifts, the heart presses forward, maybe squeezing those shoulder blades behind you. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold and release over the legs. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale to reach and rise. Exhale, hands to your heart. We'll do that two more times. Inhale, reach. Exhale, cactus or goal post the arms. Find that heart opener. Inhale, reach. Exhale, release and fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach and rise. And exhale, hands to heart. Last time here, we inhale, reach. Exhale, heart opener. Inhale, reach. And exhale, release and fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach and rise. Exhale, hands to heart. Take a moment. Feel your breath. Feel the warmth. Feel that heart opening. All right, my friends. We're going to play around with our high crescent lunge or Anjani Asana with a heart opener here. So standing in our mountain pose, hands can come to the hips. Your right foot is going to come center. And your left foot's gonna step back into that high crescent lunge. So we're stepping pretty wide, stepping to the ball of that left foot so the heel is lifted. Bending that right knee over our ankle, does not go past the ankle. Hips are square to the front of the mat. Back leg is as straight as you can get it. You can always keep a micro bend in the knee, of course. Now, once you feel this stable base, then maybe we inhale the arms up. Breathing here. Now option to hold here, option to flow with some heart openers. So if you'd like to flow, we inhale, reach. Exhale, cactus or goal post the arms, open the heart, holding that lunge. Inhale, reach. Exhale, heart opener. Inhale, reach. Exhale, heart opener. Inhale, reach, and exhale, step back to the top of your mat, to your Tadasana, you can shake it out. All right, other side, my lovelies. So hands on hips, left foot comes center, right foot steps back into that nice deep crescent lunge. Left knee now is over the ankle, back right foot heel is lifted. Squaring my torso off, my hips off to center. Finding my stable base, and then inhaling my arms up. Breathing here for a moment. And then ask yourself if you'd like to flow. If the answer is yes, we're gonna inhale, reach. Exhale, heart opener. Inhale, reach. Exhale, open. Inhale, reach. Exhale, open. Inhale, reach. Exhale, step back to the top of your mat. Shake it on out. All right, my friends, we're gonna take it back down to our mats. So on the inhale, you can reach those arms up. Exhale, fold over the legs. 
Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. You can either bring your hands to your blocks or to the mat. And then you're just gonna gently step back one foot, step back the other, and we're coming to our knee. Now you can place a pillow or a blanket or double up on your yoga mat underneath your knees. We're gonna do almost exactly what we just did in our high crescent lunge in a low crescent lunge. So again, if you know that your knees are a little bit funky, put some support under there, put a pillow, put a blanket. You can fold your mat up, put that under your knees. Also blocks come in for a low lunge. If you have short arms like me, <laughs> these are great. So I'm coming to stand on my knees. I have my blocks starting with the right leg. I'm going to step my right foot out, bend into that knee. So coming to my crescent lunge here. So I'm bending into that knee, pressing this left hip flexor into the mat. And this is where your blocks can come in hand on either side of that right foot. It can be on the mat. They can be on the blocks. You could also lift the hands to the thigh. Or perhaps inhale those arms all the way up. Holding here for a moment. And then ask yourself, would I like to flow? If the answer is yes, we inhale, lengthen. Exhale, go post, heart opener. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, open the heart. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, open. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, hands can come to the blocks or to the mat, step them back a bit, straight in that front leg. So we're coming to our half splits here, hands can be again on the mat or on the blocks, keeping the chin, chin and chest lifted. We're not hunched over here, nice tall spine, front leg is straight. You can always keep a micro bend in that knee and you're flexing those toes back towards your face. Option here, you can also kind of rock the hips. You want to get a little bit deeper into the low back, into the hips. Now gently, we're going to inhale, coming back to our low lunge. Hands on either side of the foot. Press into the blocks or into the mat. And you're going to slide that right foot back, coming back to your seat. All right. We're gonna do the other side. So again, I'm coming to stand on my knees. I have my blocks. I'm gonna step my left foot out now into my lunge, bending into that left knee. Hands can come to either side of that foot and pressing that right hip flexor down into the mat. Now maybe I stay with my hands on my blocks. Maybe I lift it to my thigh. Maybe I inhale, reach up. And then ask yourself, do I want to flow? And if the answer is yes, we inhale, reach. Exhale, heart opener. Inhale, reach. Exhale, open the heart. Inhale, reach. Exhale, open. Inhale, reach, exhale, those hands can come down to the blocks or to the mat, walk them back a bit, straight in that front leg, coming to our half splits, flexing those toes back towards your face, chin and chest stay lifted, and you rock out those hips a little bit. My friends, we're going to come back to that low lunge, press our hands into the mat or into the blocks, and just step that left foot back, taking a seat for a moment. Now, we're going to work on our camel pose here. Camel pose is a pretty intense heart opener. It's a, honestly a complete front of the body opener, which is why we were doing those lunges, opening the front of the hips, opening the front of the core, opening the heart, opening the throat. So that's what we're going to do here. Again, I do recommend you maybe place some extra support under the knees if you need it. And we're gonna get right into it, my friends. You can also use your blocks here. So I'm gonna keep my blocks nearby. So for our camel pose, 
We are coming to stand on our knees. Knees can be hip distance or a little bit wider if that feels good. We're on the tops of the feet here. Now, you take your hands and you're going to place them right where your hips, your pelvis meet your spine. So I kind of have a pretty intense dip right here. So I'm just placing my hands right on my hips. I'm going to squeeze my elbows back behind me, squeezing my shoulder blades back. Chin is lifted, chest is lifted. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start to find this heart opener here. So we're going to inhale here, exhale, start to press the hips forward, start to squeeze those shoulder blades and those elbows behind you. And then the final step is the head drop back. So the lifting of the chin and the dropping back of the head, gazing behind you, breathing here. Now to release, we do so very slowly. We inhale very slowly up and exhale very slowly release to a seat. It is important to do so slowly in this posture because these really intense heart openers, it does, you know, our lungs are right there, kind of opens up our lungs if you've ever wondered like why it's hard to breathe when you're in a back bend. That is why we want to take our time and want to listen to our body. So we're going to do that two more times. I'm going to give you some options. So we're coming back to stand on our knees. If you would like that first option that felt like enough for you, I want you to stick with that for the next two times. If you want something a little bit more intense, this time we're going to bring the hands to the heart center. Same thing here. We're going to inhale and then exhale, start to press the hips forward start to open the heart, start to gaze back. And the last step is extending those arms overhead. Breathing here. Same thing to come out. We inhale very slowly up and exhale very slowly down. All right. We got one more. So again, if you want to stick with the first option, stick there. If you'd like that second option, do that. If you'd like a little bit more, here is your third option. So this time we're going to be trying to reach either for your heels or you can actually reach for your blocks. Again, if you have short arms like me, blocks help. You can keep them on the outside of the feet. You can also bring them to the right inside of your ankles and try to reach for those blocks there. Or if you would like, Instead of being on the tops of your feet, you can come to flex your feet. So coming to the ball of the feet, so that lifts our heels up so we can reach them. Or if you'd like, you can keep the feet released and try to reach for those heels here. Find your option, listen to your body, do what feels best for you. So I'm gonna come to lift my heels up and we're gonna start the same way we started that first variation. So hands come to the back of the hips, we squeeze, so shoulder blades, the elbows behind us. We inhale here, and as we exhale, we press those hips forward, bending the back, opening the heart, gazing back, and then maybe this is where you start to reach for those heels. Or again, maybe you reach for those blocks either on the inside or the outside of the ankles. Find your camel pose. Go where it feels good for you. And when you're ready to come out of it, same thing. We inhale very, very, very slowly. And we exhale, release very, very, very slowly. All right, my lovelies, we did it. Super intense heart opener. So guess what? When we do an intense heart opener like that, you need to have a counter pose to release that spine. Guess what our counter pose is? It's a child's pose. Honestly, child's pose is my favorite <laughs> forward fold because it is a forward fold and it just releases that spine. So I'm opening my knees as wide as the mat. I'm sinking those hips down and releasing my chest down to the mat. Oh, just sinking here. Grounding myself a bit. 
Back bends are also very energizing postures. And again, it kind of starts to affect our breath a bit. And honestly, perfect for an air sign full moon practice. But with that heavy air energy and the heavy fire energy of airy season, we want to ground a bit. So ground here in your child's pose. And notice every part of you that is grounded into the mat. Maybe take a moment to lift up all 10 fingers and then place them back on the mat one by one. And breathe deeply here. And again, ask yourself, what are blockages to my love right now? What is blocking me, either giving or receiving love? And how can I release that? Now gently, on the next inhale, you can rise up to your tabletop, and then exhale, we're going to go straight to our bellies, taking your time, moving with intention. Now here, we're going to do our cool down. So again, I'm going to bring my forearms to cross in front of me. You can either bring that forehead or the chin to the forearms. So we're going to get just a little bit into the hips here. We're going to do a half frog pose. So I'm going to start with my left leg so you can see what I'm doing. You can start with either side. I'm going to bring this left knee out to the side, bending the knee. And that knee is coming straight out from my hip. I do not want you to go past the hip. You can keep it a little lower than the hip if you'd like. But I'm bending my knee out to the side. My right leg is staying straight. My foot comes directly out from my knee. You can also turn your cheek to face that bent knee if you'd like. And this is our frog pose, half frog pose. We're just going to breathe into this hip. And as you breathe here, reminding ourselves of our intention to release anything that is blocking love from our lives. And gently, when you're ready, you can release that left leg back, switching sides. Now bringing that right knee out to the side, left leg is straight. Again, that knee is coming straight out from the hip, foot is coming straight out from the knee. You can maybe turn your cheek to that side. And we're just going to breathe here into this hip. And gently when you're ready, extending that leg back. Now slowly, gently moving with intention, we're going to just turn ourselves over to our backs. So going from our prone savasana to our good old fashioned savasana. So coming to your back, if you need any support here, you like to lay on a pillow or a bolster or a blanket, you can do so here. We'll take some final supine twist so i'm bringing my arms out to a t position drawing my knees into the chest inhaling here 
and exhale, just dropping those knees over to the right, maybe gazing over the left shoulder and breathing here. Twists are a great releasing posture. So again, if there's anything that you want to release here that is blocking as well from your life, blocking your heart chakra, blocking your ability to give or receive love, Release it here. Say it out loud. Say, I release blank, whatever it is. Remember, this also applies to self-love, not just loving other people or romantic love. And gently when you're ready, inhale, bring everything back to center, and then exhale, drop those knees over to the other side, perhaps gazing over that right shoulder. And allow yourself to have this last release here. Gently inhale, coming back to center, and exhale, releasing. Now, if there's any final posture that you find that your practice needs, anything that your body is asking for, you can go there. If you are ready to find your final resting pose, your savasana, you can go there as well. I'm going to take a supta baddha konasana, so bringing my feet bottoms together to touch, opening the knees. You can place some blocks underneath your knees if you'd like, or you can just spread out on your mat. Take a good old-fashioned corpse pose. Any savasana that feels right and good for you and your body. Palms facing up to receive, palms facing down if you want that grounding energy. You can keep the eyes closed or open, but we're going to breathe here for a bit. Focusing on that heart chakra if you'd like. Visualizing a warm green light just radiating out of that heart chakra that is the color of our heart chakra. And just breathe here, and I'll let you know when it's time to come back. Gently bringing your awareness back into your space and back into your body. Maybe wiggling the toes or wiggling the fingers. Maybe rolling out the wrists or rolling out the ankles. And gently making these movements bigger until you're ready to draw those knees in. You can keep them wide if you'd like. Maybe rock from side to side a bit, massage out that low back. Maybe you take your knees in some circles. Maybe you just give yourself a little squeeze, show yourself some love here. And when you're ready, you can drop to one side to your fetal pose using your bottom arm as a pillow. 
taking a moment here. And then gently pressing your way up to a seat, any seat that you find comfortable. And once you're there, those hands can come to either side of you. I'm going to inhale those arms up, scooping up all this wonderful energy we just created. And exhale, bring those arms back down. One last release of anything that does not serve you. Inhale, those arms come up, scooping up all that energy like the big beach ball over your head, and then bringing those palms together to touch, capturing all that energy between your hands and bringing it to your heart center. Light and love in me honors the light and love in each of you. We bow to our practice. Thank you. I hope you guys had a wonderful class, my lovelies. I hope you have a wonderful full moon. Um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Also join my membership if you enjoyed this class. Um, I'm doing a live full moon workshop. I do live new moon and full moon workshops in my membership. You get worksheets for every full moon and new moon. Um, we do live tarot reading, live yoga classes every single week, and it's only $9.99 a month. So if you'd like to support my channel, if you like what I do, if you want some live yoga, live tarot, live workshops, hit that join button. I also have courses available. I also have retreats. I also offer personal tarot readings. Everything, everything I offer will be in the description box below. Um, I also have a tarot reading for this full moon in Libra, which I'll also put in the description box. I think that is all, my friends. I think that's it. So I hope you have a wonderful full moon, and I will see you next time.